Aideen here. It's a beautiful day. It's uh, late summer, early fall, around the first part of September. I had a chance to talk to Lance Egan down at Fly Fish Food. Uh, a lot of you know Lance. Uh, he is the innovator of a lot of different patterns that we fish with here. Uh, also a member of the U.S. fly fishing team and works at the uh, Fly Fish Food Fly Shop in Orem. A uh, great place to go. So I've got some info from him on fishing terrestrials, uh, ants and, and uh, grasshoppers, things like that this time of year. And then I had a chance to do a little fishing myself on American Fork Canyon. A lot of you remember that about a year ago there was a discharge from the dam work there that killed most of the fish in that in that stream and uh, I went up there and did a little fishing and I'll show you what's happening on the river now and how it's recovered. So anyway, hope you enjoy it. Got uh, Lance Egan here from uh, Fly Fish Food uh, down in Orem. Uh, Lance, one of the more recognizable tires uh, in the country and, uh, and fishermen. He's gonna give us a little info on fishing terrestrials this time of year. Lance? Cool, thanks Dean. So uh, it's terrestrial time of year, uh, you know, August, September, we get kind of between hatches. We're a little early for the fall betis. A lot of our caddis and PMDs have started to wane hatch-wise, so it's a great time of year to use terrestrial insects. Some of our most popular patterns would be things like uh, bionic ants, uh, little hopper patterns, whether you do the slum hopper or the project hopper, beetle patterns, an unsinka beetle or any sort of foam beetle but all be very good stuff. Uh, there's all kinds of different ants and beetles, hoppers, crickets, uh, things that are falling in off the uh, bankside vegetation that trout will take advantage of. It's kind of one of those, it's not necessarily a secret, but it's an often overlooked piece of fly fishing in the summer. I feel like most anglers are used to finding hatches. They see a hatch, they immediately think, I'm gonna match that hatch pretty, pretty straightforward. When you don't, one thing people don't think about a lot, I think, is uh, ants and beetles. You see a lot of hoppers, we, we sell a lot of hoppers, but ants and beetles can be really, really effective. All right, I'll do a close up on those uh, flies and uh, let everybody see them. And thank you, Lance, Perfect. appreciate your expertise. Anything special going on in the shop? No, just fall time in the shop, come visit us. We've got lots of terrestrials in stock. Come uh, fill up your box and have a great day on the river. All right, thanks a lot, Lance. Give you an idea what a, a pretty little stream of American Fork Canyon is to fish. Uh, it's a great little place to fish pocket water. Uh, it's got browns and rainbows in here. And it is uh, just a nice place to spend an afternoon. Here's another rainbow, I'll pull him out. It's about the size of the fish you're going to catch when you're up American Fork. This guy's about, uh, I imagine, about 10 inches, 9, 10 inches long, maybe 11, if I want to stretch it. Pretty fish, they're willing to take it dry. It's a lot of fun. Not to be uh, too esoteric, there has to be a lesson learned from that, uh, that willow book. There's a little brownie that uh, I picked up. I've been getting a lot of little hits by tiny little browns. Um, they're small, they're aggressive. A lot of them too small to take the fly. At least there's browns back in the river. Just show you a uh, place where I put the nicest rainbow of the day, right behind that rock right there in that still water, kind of under that log. You've got to be a little inventive when you're fishing up here. Uh, you got to find places other guys don't want to fish generally. Sometimes you just, like here, you just have to dapple your fly on there. You really can't cast into there. Just kind of get your uh, rod, reach it as far as you can, dapple it on there, and pick up a really nice rainbow best of the day. Give you an idea of this little rainbow here. It's not too big, maybe a eight, nine incher. Uh, caught him, he, he came up three times for the same fly. Most of them don't give you that many chances. So I want to say thanks to him. Uh, that I caught him. I don't know if three tries to catch a fish is more the fault of him or more the fault of me. This is that purple haze fly that I was uh, using and that was so effective up on American Fork. This is a size 14. Uh, it's got moose hair um, for a tail. It's 
you just got purple flexi floss for the body. You can use purple dubbing. Um, basically, what we got here is an Adams, a parachute Adams, uh, with a purple body. Uh, that's that's really the the big difference. It's got the grizzly hackle and brown hackle as far as the the wing on it goes. It's a super effective fly. Uh, I tie them a little bushy for American Fork, uh, so they float. Uh, a little better on the uh, the pocket water there, but that's uh, that was a super effective fly. Up on American Fork Canyon, it's late summer, beautiful afternoon, and I'm having a great time up here fishing drives. Been having a lot of luck catching rainbows uh, on purple haze flies, although I've also caught fish with ants and uh, caddis flies, and I've had some luck. Uh, with comparatives too, so the fish are uh, are pretty eager. There's a lot of really small browns in the river, little dinks, two three inches. They must have just been planted. As a lot of uh, as a lot of you know, last year they had a, uh, a discharge of sludge out of the Tibble Fork Dam, uh, and uh, put a lot of sludge in this river. Killed most of the fish, and I was kind of curious to see what the fishing is like now. There are some nice rainbows in here, and there are a lot of small brown trout and I did catch a few medium sized too. So evidently these browns have been planted in here trying to bring it back and it doesn't look like it's going to take long. Had lots and lots of hits today on dries. Uh, gosh for every three, for every one fish I caught I probably had three or four hits. Uh, I don't know why I was missing so many of them. Some of them were so small they couldn't take it so it's just a lot of little dinks but a lot of nicer fish that uh, they come up and hit it and I would lose them maybe I didn't give them enough time to take the fly. But it was a ball. Caught quite a few fish. Uh, that purple haze size 14 and 16. That was the killer today. Um, come on up. Fish this pocket water. Go upstream. Get in the river. Fish the edges. Fish the runs. Fish the little plunge pools. I think a guy can learn more about fly fishing by fishing a small stream like this uh, than fishing a big river like the Green. Once you kind of get you get an idea of fishing this pocket water in these small streams, where the fish are, how they how how they lie, you can translate that to the Provo River, the Weber River, the Green River, anywhere you fish. You can break those rivers down, kind of dissect them into uh, into a small stream. So come on up, have some fun. Fall is a great time to be fishing up here. It's just getting going. Wet a dry fly. All else fails, throw on a size uh, 14 elk air caddis, guarantee you, you'll get some action. Well, maybe not guarantee, but you should get some action.